This is Mr. Martin. These are video notes for pre-calculus honors. We're in chapter 9. Uh, this is video 1 for, uh, for section 9.1. We're going to be talking about uh, conic sections in general and uh, some circle stuff too. So let's start off with uh, what a conic section is. Uh, a basic definition would be a figure formed by slicing a double-ended cone by a plane. All right, and we can see over here in this picture what a uh, double-ended uh, cone would look like. So you see in all these pictures we have two cones end-to-end. -end. And depending on where our plane uh, cuts through the cone, we'll get different conic sections. So this first set that we have here, these are uh, degenerate conics. Uh, for the first one, if our plane cuts right through where these two cones intersect, we would simply get a point. If my plane intersects the edge of the two cones, we would end up with a line. And then if our um, plane goes through this center point here and goes through both cones, we would get uh, two intersecting lines. So those are degenerate cases. They don't really form a conic. We just call them degenerate conics. Then over here, uh, the plane could intersect parallel to the bases of the cones to get a circle, uh, oblique to the bases, and we would get an ellipse. Or we can get a parabola if we cut through in the way this picture shows. Or if we go through the top and the bottom cones together, we'll get our hyperbola. So those are our basic conic sections there. Um, so our first conic section that we'll talk about, uh, which you should have, have some experience with, is a circle. So definition of a circle is the set of all points equidistant from a given point. So we start with a point. If I want all the other points that are the same distance from this one, it would actually form the circle. So let's pretend that this point is right in the center. And we've got this distance here. R, uh, we've got the standard equation of a circle. So we've got x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared, where the center point is hk. And then r is going to be uh, the center. And if this uh, sort of looks like the Pythagorean theorem, um, it should. Here's our radius. We could draw in any point that we pick on here. We could draw in a little right triangle. And this would just be some point x, y. Okay, so um, this would be our x distance, this would be our y distance, depending on where our center is. Um, basically, each of these points would satisfy uh, the Pythagorean theorem, which is our equation of the circle. Now, if our uh, circle is centered at the origin, then this simply becomes x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. Um, and um, let's take a look at a few examples. If you want to try these examples on your own, and then go ahead and restart the video to see if you got them right, or you could just follow along as we go. So for the first one, uh, we want to write the equation of a circle in standard form, given that the point 1, negative 2 lies on the circle, and negative 3, 5 is the center. So I've got hk is the center, is negative 3, 5. And we want to put this in standard form, so we're looking at x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. And I'm given hk, I'm given some other point um, xy, so I'm going to substitute in this value of x and y and my value of h and k, and we're going to solve for the radius. So I'm going to have 1 plus 3, because it's minus negative 3 squared plus my y value is negative 2, minus 5 squared is equal to r squared. 
So I get that r squared is equal to 4 squared plus negative 7 squared, which is 65. And really, I only need r squared for my standard form. So then I go ahead and substitute in my uh, radius. And I'm going to have x plus 3 squared plus y minus 5 squared is equal to r squared, which is 65. All right, as usual, if you have any questions, make sure that you uh, ask me. Write those down if you're not in class so you don't forget. All right, given the following equation of a circle, sketch the graph and identify its center and radius. Now, uh, one of the skills that you're going to uh, need to refresh on uh, for this unit is completing the square. So if you would like some more practice, let me know and I can get you some more practice. Uh, otherwise, make sure that you uh, ask me questions as we go along. So to put this in the standard form, we're going to have to complete the square for the x's and for the y's. So for my x's, this is how I like to complete the square. I'm going to have x squared minus 2x plus something that's going to go over here, plus y squared minus 4y, plus something that's going to go over here to complete the square. I'm going to move my constant to the other side. Since I'm adding two things to the left, I'm going to have to also add two things to the right. If you recall, the process for completing the square is to take half of the b term. That's our coefficient of x. Take half of that and square it. And I'll usually just write half of that. So half of negative 2 is negative 1 squared. Half of the b term over here. So half of negative 4, that's negative 2 squared. And then I'll add these to the other side. Negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 2 squared is 4. Then this becomes a perfect square. That's what we mean by completing the square. We get a perfect square. So this will factor to x minus 1 squared. And that's why I write this as that half squared because then this number just goes right in there. Plus, and then this becomes y minus 2 squared. And then we've got 4 plus 1 plus 4 is 9. And there you have your standard form. Okay, once we have this, uh, we know that the center is going to be 1, 2. We know that my radius is going to be the square root of 9 or 3. And then we can graph it. So I've got uh, 1, 2, radius of 3. I'll just go all four directions, 3 units, and then connect those. 1, 2, 3, 3 to the left, and then just kind of connect that with a as smooth a circle as you can. Okay, so that's number two. Uh, make sure you read the questions carefully because um, we want to sketch the graph and identify the center and radius, uh, but in addition we also found the standard form, um, which is kind of necessary to find the rest of that information. All right, moving on to number three. Uh, find x-intercepts and y-intercepts of the graph of the circle by the given equation. So for my y-intercepts, this means that our values of x are is 0. Okay, so if I plug 0 in for x, I'm going to have 0 minus 4 squared plus y minus 2 squared is equal to 16. So this gives me um, negative 4 squared is 16 plus y minus 2 squared is equal to 16. And I'm going to uh, subtract 16 from both sides, so I get y minus 2 squared is equal to 0. And then I'll take the square root of both sides, so I get y minus 2 is equal to 0. Normally we would do positive or negative, but since we're looking at 0 here, we don't really have to. So we get y is equal to 2. So that's our y-intercept. Now for our x-intercepts, intercept or intercepts, we know that y is going to be 0, so we'll do the, we'll substitute in 0 for y. So I've got x minus 4 squared uh, plus 0 minus 2 squared is equal to 16. So I've got x minus 4 squared 
plus 4 is equal to 16. x minus 4 squared is equal to 12. I'll take the square root of both sides. x minus 4 is equal to positive or negative square root of 12. Remember, when you take a square root, you have to have a positive and a negative, which is going to be positive or negative 2 root 3. We'll add 4 to both sides, and we get x is equal to 4 plus or minus 2 root 3. And these are our two x-intercepts. So if we wanted to graph this, we could see that it would just touch the y-axis at 2, but it would go through the x-axis at these two points. All right. If you uh, had any questions, make sure that you ask. And um, that's going to be the end of the video for circles, and we'll see you next time.